Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about numerous storms with severe weather, as well as two tropical disturbances in the Gulf. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is your overall satellite picture for this morning, se uh, September the 7th already, if you can believe that. There's Larry safely out in the open waters. It's still a major hurricane. I mean, Larry's been pretty impressive storm. It's actually accumulated what they call uh, ACE points, accumulated uh, cyclone energy. More than 17 seasons since the satellite era, since 1966. So this has been an incredible amount of energy it actually takes to keep a major hurricane alive for an extended period of time. And Larry's going to be one of those systems going to be a long, around a long time, and it's supposed to miss Bermuda's to the east. But it could impact uh, Newfoundland, but that's not until Saturday. It's still a hurricane. Uh, what we're mainly concerned about is this uh, invest, what they labeled 91L, out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to bring, bring in some heavier rains into uh, Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle. But we also have a disturbed area still in the Central America down here. This is going to be moving northwest, and this energy is going to be getting into the Gulf of Mexico again by late this weekend. It could spin up another tropical system heading back into the Gulf. Uh, then we also have very active waves coming off of Africa now as we go into peak season of a hurricane season. So let's take a look at Larry. This is expected to continue uh, northwest, going to be missing Bermuda. That's going to be continuing northwest, safely away from the east coast, and then probably getting really close to Newfoundland by the time uh, Saturday comes around as an 85-mile-per-hour hurricane. There's our Invest 91L down here in the Gulf. Got a 30% chance of development from the National Hurricane Center. Whether it forms or not, right now it's a 25-mile-per-hour you know, wind system. I only needs 15 mile, more miles an hour to get to a tropical storm. Storm or not, impacts are the same from this system. In fact, it's already dumped a lot of rain yesterday into uh, portions of uh, Louisiana along the coast here with this stalled frontal boundary. Here's the rain amounts just in the, over the last uh, 24 hours. We had that disturbance to the north into uh, upstate uh, Minnesota here, northern Wisconsin, get into upstate New York, uh, Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, as well as into Maine. But then we had that stalled frontal boundary that dumped some heavier rain yesterday in Austin, San Antonio, and portions of Houston. But then Louisiana got the culprit of that stalled front and Invest 91L in places like near Lake Charles. I actually picked up up to six inches of rain. It's the last thing they need in that area as there's still about 500,000 people without power from Ida. But unfortunately, more heavier rains to come from what's to come from Invest 91L over the next uh, seven, you know, several days. In fact, the latest uh, EPS guidance has upped the intensity on this, and it does look like it's calling for just a minimal tropical depression from this system. Like I mentioned, right now it's 25 miles an hour. So if it goes to a depression, it's another 10 miles an hour to 35. If it goes to a storm, it's 15 more miles an hour to be 40. I mean, doesn't change the impacts on heavier rains. That's gonna remain the same. The difference between a 25 mile per hour wind and a 40 mile per hour wind is not really that much at all. So uh, regardless if it actually gets a name or not into Mindy, it's going to be making a lot of impacts along the coast with heavier rains in the in the coming days. But up to the north, we've got some instability with the trough going to be digging in. And we do have a round of severe weather going to be hitting uh, later on this afternoon into the evening hours in places like Chicago, Chicago, into Grand Rapids, into Aurora here. So all these areas will be under the gun, uh, seeing some of that strong to severe thunderstorms as we have a line that's going to be setting up along the boundary of that cool area and a trough that's gonna be digging in, that's gonna be diving off to the southeast as we get into the late afternoon hours as well. So yeah, definitely some more heavier rains and some severe weather uh, to the north as that trough will be digging in. Here's the anomalies later on this afternoon. This is zero Z, which puts it around six o'clock. That's almost peak heating. This runs every six hours. So instead of I show you noon, I'm gonna show you six o'clock. 
uh that's that has the trough digging in uh, into our northern states as we have a bridge building out west so it's going to be a, a, a pretty hot week for september standards as the ridge will start building out west and slowly migrate uh further east uh, throughout the week dumping those uh you know higher anomalies and putting it over to 90s 95s probably getting near the triple digits by the time we get into uh, late week in some of these uh, central part of the U.S. So it's definitely a, a hotter week for uh, September standards for at least the western half of the state. The eastern half is underneath that trough and all the instability. That's where you're going to be seeing some of those below average anomalies uh, in those regions. As we continue with the radar view and where the heavier rains are going to be later on this afternoon, there's that boundary with that severe weather. So yes, we're calling for more heavy rain in portions of Wisconsin. That'll get into Michigan as the tail end of that front will transfer into Chicago. You know, getting into northern Indiana, getting into central uh, central Illinois as that as that it will really start to fade as it continues pushing off there's sporadic marginal risk for severe weather so these are just kind of an isolated nature as these try to back build off the off the frontal boundary down here this is the culprit of invest 95 91l and those stall boundaries so as we heat it up in the ap afternoon you get that sea breeze action and yes, these areas from Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, getting into the Florida Panhandle, uh, you're going to be seeing some some heavier rains. I know I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Jean Lee out there uh, in uh, Melbourne, Florida. She was soaking up the sun yesterday and uh, uh, down there off the beach, taking advantage of the Labor Day weekend. So man, it's uh, before some of this some of the rain is going to be hitting today. So. Let's take a look at the trough that's going to be digging in. These are your anomalies for Wednesday. Yeah, there, there's your higher anomalies out west. Again, 10, 15, 20 degrees above average temperatures will continue to press a little bit further off into the east as we go throughout the week. Underneath that trough, you got the instability, you got the rain showers, you got uh, that severe weather. It's going to be hit, hitting uh, the east coast by the time we get into Wednesday. And there's your uh, threat for severe weather. We actually highlighted this feature several days ago that I felt like it's going to be come to fruition. Here it is with the marginal risk and probably as we get into tomorrow, a lot of this is going to be intensifying to a slight risk for severe weather. Again, we're at these same areas that got hit with Ida into New York, into Philadelphia, into Baltimore, into Washington, D.C., along the Virginia Beach. Yeah, we could be looking at a strong line of severe storms uh, as it continues pushing off into the East Coast. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And some of these could spin up some, some smaller hail and an isolated tornado threat is definitely not out of the question with some strong wind gust as well. <clears throat> So as we get into and take advantage of the the two day uh, precipitation anomalies, it'll kind of show you some where some of the heavier rains will fall. Again, high and dry out west in the good central part of the country, underneath that ridge of high pressure. It's a dominating ridge. It's not much rain going to fall underneath that ridge where the trough is. That's your instability of air. Got that uh, set up for you know heavier rain again into uh, Wisconsin, getting into Michigan. Uh, parts of the mid-Atlantic states getting along the coastal regions. Some of these could pick up at least easily one to three inches of rain down here, a little bit higher, uh, higher amounts with that Invest 91L coming in. So again, it, it's going to be pushing off from in Louisiana, eventually probably getting into uh, the Florida Panhandle region. So it's not out of the question by Thursday, possibly maybe Friday, right before it hits and makes landfall, it could spin up into a minimal tropical storm. It's not out of the question that it could still actually do that uh, in the in the coming days. So as we go into that Thursday time frame with the high temperatures, again, there's your higher anomalies continue pushing just a little bit further off into the east. Underneath that trough, we'll dig a little bit further off into the southeast as we go throughout the week. Uh, there's the setup for Thursday with that cold front as it really starts to clear the air out behind it. Again, we're going to be setting up for another round of storms even on Thursday as along this front with the combination of stalled fronts, the combination of Invest 91L, and then also uh, just maybe some, some, of the, some of the extreme outflow from Larry all coming together as setting the stage for heavier rains just along the coast, along the east coast here. That'll be on the day on uh, Thursday, uh, September the 9th. 
Then as we go transition into Friday, that's when I think are going to be kind of what they call peaking out as far as the heat. And you can easily see much of the country is experiencing that high pressure underneath. And easily some of these areas could be picking up some triple digit temperatures for September 10th. That's hot. <laughs> that is definitely hot. So there's not much cooler air to speak of after this as the, as the ridge will start to build you know, they're all throughout the week. And as that front will continue shifting offshore, yeah, that ridge just continues to build. So a lot of these are above average anomalies, even out into the east, because these average anomalies have gone way down since they've, you know, in the middle of August, because this is September the 10th now. It's supposed to be cooler than what, what we're heat seeing this week. There's Friday. Again, as that cold front clears the air, there's Larry safely offshore, and then what's to come with as this traverses as Invest 91L, if it doesn't form or not, it could actually intensify into a storm off the Carolina coast. So we'll be watching this. We'll be watching uh, what's maybe to come with Invest 91L, but the main setup from this is you're going to be your heavier downpouring rains as it really starts to clear out for much of the country on a friday and especially in the saturday there's hardly any of a drop of rain for the entire united states as that ridge really dominates and pushes everything offshore but look what happens again we got to look for the gulf again and then by the time we get into that saturday time frame that instability i showed you around central america that'll be continue lifting off into the west northwest and a lot of that instability will get you know, back into the Gulf of Mexico again by the time we get into Saturday. And uh, as we get into Saturday, we watch to the north. So the ridge will start to fade a little bit as we do see a kind of a, a mini or cold front trying to push in from, from the north. It's not terribly too much colder air to work with, but we do have some kinks in the hose, for example, that we could sneak in that, that, um, that trough underneath into the, the Gulf and kind of eat away from some of that high pressure. And if it does able to do that, it's going to be pushing a lot of that moisture into the interior regions, just kind of along the coastal communities into Texas, again, into Louisiana. Uh, there's been this, this area right here has actually not been hit from a tropical system yet. So it's got some of the warmest waters out there. There's not any upwelling or anything of anything from Ida or Grace or anything like that. So this is naturally going to be some of your hotter uh, uh, sea surface anomaly temperatures along the coast because it hasn't been really impacted from a tropical system. So as this system continues lifting up further north, it's going to have a lot of deeper tropical moisture to work with. And again, it's not out of the question. We could be looking at it for another tropical type entity uh, back into the Gulf of Mexico as this will continue pushing in uh, You know, as we get into early uh, next week so as we get into early next week on that monday time frame september the 13th this would be six days away right we've got a lot of that deep tropical moisture showing back up along the coastal regions out ahead of that tropical wave i showed you back into central america currently right now so it's pulling a lot of the deep tropical moisture into our interior regions along the coast we could be looking at se several day rain heavier rains if not more along the coast from texas to louisiana and a lot of the coastal communities with some some heavier rains as that trough will start to dig in from the north and kind of eat away from that high pressure there is some colder air underneath that it's not like substantially cold or anything like that but it's definitely you know going to be feeling somewhat fall like at least for idaho and to montana and to, to, to wyoming and to colorado some of these areas could easily be in the 40s if not uh, upper 30s by the time we get into next tuesday as you wake up so that's a, that's definitely a taste of fall even for even for them in this this neck of the wood i'm not sure how far this particular cold front is able going to be pushing further south it's going to be influenced by this this uh, tropical wave so we could be getting what they call a squeeze play coming in as this uh, tropical disturbance will continue trying to push north but if it gets hit with that cold front it's going to keep a lot of the moisture and intensity just along the coast and that could set the stage for a multi-day rain event that could unfold by the time early next week rolls around 
And that is what the Climate Prediction Center is already kind of highlighted in their extended outlook with that secondary tropical wave coming on shore. We could be looking at some heavier rains from the 14th to the 18th time frame along the Texas coastline into Louisiana again, unfortunately. So that's definitely something I'm looking out for. And some of the model guidance is already kind of hinting at that of some of the heavier rains along the coastal communities. This is over the next uh, 10 days from the European model. Underneath that ridge of high pressure, you can see there's not much rain to speak of. Unfortunately, where these areas desperately need the rain, it continues to remain high and dry for the foreseeable future for much of the Northwest, much of the West Coast. Yeah, you could get sporadic showers here and there, but it, these amounts aren't really going to amount to much as a lot of the instability is going to be well to the north along that trough, at least at the beginning stages of the earlier of the week. As this moves offshore, we'll be looking at that disturbance down to the south. And of course, that secondary disturbance uh, that's coming in back behind the 91L disturbance. Here's the GFS model shows again, a lot of the same areas along the coastal communities could be picking up some heavier rain. So we'll just have to be watching that secondary system as we move throughout the week and what's to come with that particular system. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after storm.